Hey guys, Jordan here at Vaping USA. Just showing you, um, let's say, a little more of an advanced build. The last one was, you know, for getting started, kind of tinkering around, um, but we're definitely going to go a little more advanced on this one. Um, so, one thing I'd say you should always have for rebuildables is going to be an ohm tester. Um, very crucial. I mean, you don't want to be running too low of ohms with, you know, a 10 amp battery, 20 amp battery. It's not going to be safe. Um, but for the build today, I'm going to be using the Sony VTC4. I'm going to be using and on top of the Panzer here, I'm building the Atomic. Um, some of the tools I like to use is going to be um, my screwdriver here, my favorite screwdriver. It's a one and, uh, one and one fifth screwdriver, so that is like a macro coil. Um, I've got my nice needle nose pliers. Got a nice pick here. Some more organic cotton. Do recommend boiling it after you buy it. Um, just a little safer for you guys. And of course, a nice little pair of scissors to cut the cotton and some to cut my canthal. So, for this build, start off by cutting out about six inches of uh, 24 gauge, and then we're going to cut two pieces of that though. This one. Here's your second piece there. Now, I'm going to wrap around a one fifth uh, screwdriver, one and one fifth, um, which is about that size right there. I mean, it's pretty, not too small, but it's, it's a good size. Um, so first thing I like to do, I'm gonna throw my drip atomizer onto my ohm meter just for st stability wise, just to keep it a little more stable. And I'm gonna go ahead what I like to do for these style of wraps is I like to hold one end. Once you get this first wrap done, it's no problem. So once you spin around like that, try to keep those leads, your canthal, parallel. You want to be kind of touching, butted up against each other. So if you can kind of see that, the first two are always the hardest to get started. But once you have that going, I mean, it's easy and it gets easier. So. This is wrap number three. Now keeping, you know, keep an eye on how many wraps you have and kind of play with that because you know find that you may like, you know, more wraps or you may like less, and that's going to determine your resistance. So, um, you know, it's really something you play around with, guys. But um, got four wraps here. I'm going to go for six on this build. So here's five. And and six there. There we are. Just gonna kind of try to fix this lead here. And then if you want to get a close up on that, so there's my six wraps there. Let's go ahead and finish the other coil up. Get six on that one. started say so one big thing is always keep tension on the canthal it's going to keep it a lot tighter together it's going to make it easier to work with so there I'm at three four five Here we are, guys, once you have your wraps all done, I'm just actually going to pull. You see that last bead is a little loose. I'm just going to take my pliers here and just kind of pull it tight. One more time here. And we can always fix it up when we put it on the RDA also. But uh, there's your second wrap. All right, so go ahead and loosen the post up. Now 
I'm using 24 gauge for this, so it's quite thick. So when I get it in that center post with both of them, I'm going to kind of have to jiggle it a little bit to get it in there. But what I like to do, always leave one lead longer than the other. It's easy to feed one in, and then as you get to your closer to the post, you just feed that other one right through. How I like to wrap these is, uh, can you see how that wrap, the middle wrap here comes over and the outer wrap goes underneath the coil. So once you have that, go ahead and just get it in there, pull your leads a little tight. Now what I like to do is I just push my leads off to the side like this, kind of holds them in place. Go ahead and pull my screwdriver out and I'm going to enter in the other coil here. So again, that outer lead needs to go underneath, the inner needs to go over. So. Let's see here, two, four, five, six. Go. Going in. Let's lift that lead. Like I said, the 24 gauge is a little fatter wire, so it takes a little, a little finagle to get it in there. But once it's in, it's good to go. Screwdriver back on. Come on. All right, so I got it going through. Now I'll take my screwdriver here, or my pliers, sorry. And uh, I'm going to pull it tight. Just pull it right through there. Kind of be gentle when you pull it though. You don't want to break your leads or anything. So there you are. You got your, uh, got your coils inside there. We just got to tighten down these posts a little bit. Very slightly. Just kind of snug them up for now. Just snug. I'm going to clip all the leads here with all this extra wire. Try to get as close to it as you can if possible. guys so there we are and now we're just gonna have to clean them up and uh, pinch them so after you have them all snipped go ahead and insert the screwdriver back in there the same size you used and if you see they're kind of angled kind of in a weird position go ahead give it a little pull try to tighten up the wire tighten down the post a little more And then you can kind of just bend it. Give it an angle or kind of pushing it to the center is definitely going to help with when we wick it, putting as much cotton as we need. Um, you don't want it too far over on the on the atomizer. So got that coil done. Go ahead. Give that one a bend. Pull it a little bit, kind of tighten it up. You see that? This lead just sticks out a little too far when I pulled it to make it tight. So I'm just going to loosen it up a little bit and kind of pop that the leads in just so that we have enough room to put a nice amount of cotton in. Go ahead and just kind of push these in a little bit. Flip it around, and I'm going to just try to grab that lead again. Just kind of jiggle it through.
There we are. So that's in. Nice and tight. We can go ahead and re tighten down those posts. position that one again kind of pull it up pull it out make it snug and then one thing I like to do because you know obviously when we wick this you're gonna have a lot of wick in this side of the well and this side of the tank is gonna have barely any we're gonna want to try to move the coil more to the center of the atomizer so that we can get a you know more of a symmetrical wick it's gonna wick better give you better flavor that way so what I like to do I'm gonna pull it back and out and we're going to try to just nudge it towards the center with the screwdriver if I can. If not, grab a pliers or a, a tweezers of some sort. I'm just going to kind of grab those leads and just bring it in a little bit. Again, just like the last one, we want to keep them both more of in the center of the deck. Just going to make it easier for when we put our cotton in, the juice will wick better. So. I'm going to go ahead and throw this on the panzer here, give it a test fire. All right. So in my last build, guys, I torched the canthaw before I twist or twisted or wrapped it. Um, with doing the wider gauge wires, I find it easier to just wrap them around first and then torch it on the device. So we're going to go ahead. And just kind of pulse them. You want them to heat evenly from the inside out. And you see how that leg there kind of starts heating first. They don't really heat evenly. You're going to have to take your pliers, take your screwdriver, whatever kind of... Um, you want to adjust that coil. So I'm going to kind of pull it tight. Pull it over. Make sure that one is. Tighten these connections down just to make sure. A little pulse fire again. Get a little more even. A little bit. Let's grab the tweezers and just kind of pinch them. You don't have to like crank and real pinch hard, but just, just enough to have that canth all kind of compact on itself. Just like that. You don't want any of the canthal overlapping each other. That's You're not going to get good flavor that way. Um, so try to keep them, you know, if you can, not overlapping. Try to keep them more parallel build. Pull it tight. And I'm just going to pinch this one real quick. That's pretty much looking, probably looking good here, huh? Pretty close. That one heats up a little too hot, a little too quick. And, ooh. <laughs> you can cut that one out. My little finger scissors. Um, but again, just kind of pinching them. I'm going to cut that lead in there, kind of so I pulled that one forward more. test fire. Oops, that one's not heating up. Let's check my connections real quick. 
Sometimes they wobble a little loose when you're, you know, playing with them, trying to get them right. So always kind of, always just snug them up for the first time, and then when I'm pretty much done, ready to put my cotton in, give them a good tighten down. And this 24 gauge is very chunky. You shouldn't be able to clip it really with those leads. Again, kind of heating up. This one's a little quicker again. That's pretty even right there. All right guys, so after you've let your coils cool down, um, we're gonna go ahead and let's just put it on the ohm meter, test, see where your ohms are at. And this is gonna be, you know, battery safety wise, you know, wanna use the Sony's probably for this build. Guessing it's gonna be around a 0 0.3, which isn't horribly too low. So this is about 0.5, I got on the ohm reader there. Probably will bump it down a little bit once we get the cotton in, once we get everything going. Um, so. Cotton wise, what I do with that? Cotton balls are not really a ball in a sense, they are a strip. There is an end to this. If you find the end of the cotton ball, it makes it so much easier. It's almost kind of like pushing it in the center. There it is, kind of find it, and just kind of roll that out. And we'll kind of unravel this part here. Be careful with it, you don't have to rip it or anything. And there you go, there is that stripped piece of cotton ball. Always on the ends, there's always this big, huge, fluffy piece. Just get rid of it. It's worth nothing to you. Look at that, and we've got this nice strip here that we're going to be using today. Now we're only using for, you know, this whole coil, probably only going to use right around this much right here so not too much um, but the best way I find to use cotton as a wick you have to kind of kind of pull it apart in a sense and thin it out some of these parts are really thick and uh, what happens with that is the juice is going to bunch up in there and it's not going to wick to your coil you're going to get those dry hits and the coil still going to look like there's liquid on it so um, what I do I just kind of pull it apart very lightly. If you find the part that seems a little more fluffy compared to something that's a little more compact, go ahead and leave that alone. Just want to kind of pull it apart very, very gently. Around. Kind of pull in here. And then what I like to do um, is roll it, but I don't like to roll it very tight. That's why we pulled it apart to loosen it up. So basically, I'm going to roll it very loosely, just like this, to get it going in the shape of a wick, at least. Got it. It's more of that oval, that circle-ish. Don't wrap it or roll it very tight, though. Very, very loosely, if you can. So right there. Now we're going to repeat the last process. We're going to go ahead and pull a little bit. Thin it out because it's still quite a bit large. There we go. Pull it here, flip it around. There we go. So again, nice and loose, not too packed tight. I'm going to go ahead and roll it again, just real lightly. This thing going here. Alright, so that looks like the start of a really nice wick. 
just want it to be, you don't want it to be bunching up, you don't want it to have like clumps on it, try to make it as even as possible, just going to make it the easiest to work with when you put it inside. And what I'm going to do, I always like to roll one end to kind of make it so it enters through the coil easy, and you always enter it in through the open end of the cup. So I'm going to get this going through there and start pulling. You don't want to have the cotton inside the coil too tight, but it shouldn't be too loose where it falls out. Um, and too tight means where I go to pull some of this cotton through and it pulls the coil with it. That's going to be like way too tight. Um, so when you get it in there, yeah, it should slide nice and easily, kind of like what it's doing. Hit a little tight spot here. I'm just going to kind of back it off. can here. Alright guys, and that right there is going to be our first one. So I'm going to go ahead and snip this about right there. And because this coil on this side is going to be shorter, I'm going to wrap this part of the leg of the wick underneath the coil. So, pretty much I like to take it, bend it. You want to leave a nice little bend in here. Don't try to pack it too tight. And just kind of tuck that underneath the coil. And then with the extras, you can go ahead and just snip it pretty close. Just like that. And I'm going to tuck the rest of that right underneath. For this one, we're going to go back up just like the other one, come around, and I'm going to try to pack that one underneath very loosely if I can. Don't try to pack the cotton in too tight under the coil. If you do, when that juice gets saturated and the cotton expands, it's going to kind of give you a burnt taste. So, you know, very lightly put your cotton in there if possible. And actually, I'm gonna, I'm gonna cut off just a small amount of that one here. All right. Going around. Again, we're just gonna be packing it very lightly. Try to keep your wick as symmetrical as possible. Um, just because, you know, if you have one side with tons of wick, one side with no wick, definitely one side is going to, you know, dry out quicker and then it's just not going to taste as well. So we'll go ahead and kind of get this second wick going here. Flip it over, I'll start on this end. Hold here, nice and light. Twist that end. Feed it through the open side of the cup again. Once you get that in, again, it shouldn't be too tight. It should not be too loose. It should have a little resistance pulling it through, but it should not pull the coil with it. So I've got a nice, it's a little loose right here if you see that. Got a little knot right there. Right there, that's perfect. So again, we've got this end lead, we'll leave a little longer. And this one we're gonna wrap, actually pull some out of that, it's a little fat. Just kind of thin it up a little bit like that. So go ahead with that outer lead, or the outer uh, wick, and wrap it underneath. Not too tight, leave a little bow there on the end. Get that on the inside and clip that tail for it. Very easily. 
And for this one, again, it's probably a little too long. Go ahead and just shorten it up just a little bit. Same as your last one, wrap it around, give it that loop, and then push it under the coil, but not too tightly. So there is your coil with your wicking in it. Now all you gotta do is put some juice on top and vape on it. So I'm gonna go ahead and find my liquid here, vaping some Papa Smurf. Pretty much just Saturate this whole thing. And kind of once in a while, I'll use my pick to almost kind of thin the cotton out in a sense. Try to make sure everything is where it needs to be. And keep adding your liquid. Kind of messing with them guys you know with the cotton already in there we just saturated it one thing i find is that you want your cotton to look you see how that's not like white it's almost like grayish because the juice is saturated it where this here is very white that means there's too much cotton there it's too compact so what i like to do is just take small you know something nice and pointy and small and just kind of pull at the cotton kind of loosens it up I'd probably pull a little bit out there. I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of put that back in place like before. Give it a little wrap and right underneath again. Test fire here. A little juicy yet. All right, just about done. One last time, I like to make sure the cotton is all packed underneath there. I'm gonna give my uh, bolts one last tightening, just because I'm you know, always messing with them when you're adding in the cotton, when you're playing with the coils to get them right where you need them to be. Just always try to keep them nice and tight. There that is, I'm gonna do one more test for you, for you guys. She chucks the vapor. So there you have it, there is your, you know, uh, low ohm build for you, but I do want to say again, make sure you're using your Sony VTC4s. If not, pick some up, but it's not going to be safe if you're not using them, so definitely do that. But uh, let me show you guys, give you a quick vape for this thing. I'm vaping some Papa Smurf from Vaping USA. Bye. Uh -huh.